Hello and welcome everyone to episode 32 of the Ortho Eval Pal podcast. Today we're going to be talking about orthotics and um, we're going to be talking about orthotics specifically for healthcare providers. Um, this is not going to be very technical for an orthotist or pedorthist, but I'm talking about PAs, FNPs, PTs, athletic trainers, uh, healthcare providers who see a lot of lower extremity issues. And um, we're, we're going to talk about breaking down the orthotic a little bit, uh, who needs it, when are they appropriate, what kinds of diagnoses do we use orthotics for. So I think it's going to be very important today that we just give you some tidbits of information that may help you make a referral for an orthotic fitting a little bit easier, okay? Uh, because we could do really a, a whole week of orthotic work and, um, and it get really complicated with this, but we're going to break this down, make it easy, and uh, we should have some fun with this. Before I get started today, I just wanted to let you folks know that I really appreciate uh, all of your time listening. The great comments that we've been getting have been awesome, and uh, thank you so much for doing that. And if anybody's interested in me doing a CME course at some point in the future, just go on to our uh, page at uh, orthoevalpal.com, go to the sign-in section, and uh, just leave me a note. Say, yeah, I'd like a CME about uh, this particular topic regarding orthopedics, or you know, it could be anything from the foot and ankle to the knee, shoulder, uh, cervical spine. And uh, I'd just like to get an idea on how many people would be interested in doing that. I uh, Prior to doing orthoevalpal, I did something called main orthopedic seminars, where I gave CME lectures several times a year. I have given lectures uh, in uh, California and uh, in the Massachusetts area regarding uh, shoulder dysfunction. Would love to get back to doing that and I uh, just want to see what kind of interest we have. So please send me a note and uh, any questions or uh, any concerns or any topic you want me to talk about, I'd be uh, more than happy to uh, try to throw a podcast together for you. Make sure you leave your name because I'll give you a shout out the next time you do that. Great. So today let's start by talking a little bit about the foot and ankle. Now, we want to try to figure out who is the most appropriate person to put an orthotic on. Some people claim that every patient should be in an orthotic. Um, I'm not a big believer in that. I think that uh, we develop our foot structure and our lower extremity structure um, for a certain reason by putting a certain amount of pressure through it. And it's important that we don't just blanketly put orthotics on people. Orthotics are very hard to get reimbursement on. And I think it's just because there has been a neglect in the past and too many people um, really just doing too many different types of orthotics just for any old person out there. And so what I want to do is I want to talk about the specificity of who we put these on and when we put them on. But I want to go back to the beginning here. I want to talk about the foot and ankle a little bit. So you have this idea on where I'm going to go with this. So if you are an average person who walks the average 6,000 steps a day, we've calculated that that's about 3,000 uh, steps per foot. Okay. And this is between males and females. We got an average. And then, um, each step is about two times the amount of body weight through your foot and ankle. So if you are a 150 pound person and you take 3,000 steps on one side, that is 900,000 pounds of pressure or 450 tons just through one leg if you weigh 150 pounds and if you're only walking 3,000 steps per day on one side. So your foot and ankle will take a beating in the course of the day. So why do we talk about orthotics? Why are orthotics important? I've been doing orthotics for um, over 12 years now. I absolutely love doing orthotics. I take impressions, I do fittings, um, we modify orthotics. And the reason I like it is because it is something that you can do to get an immediate change. So look at your car for an example. If you're driving down the road, you let go of the steering wheel and the car drives into the ditch, it's obviously out of alignment, okay? You look at the tires, the tires are all worn on one side, and you say, okay, I've got an alignment issue, my tires are worn out, but let's say that you just change the tires like you would just change your sneakers, but you don't do anything to the alignment. The tires are going to wear out again, right? Because there's this abnormal amount of pressure and biomechanically, um, too much stress is too many areas on the foot and ankle and the lower extremity. Um, so it's important that when you when you look at an orthotic, you think about how much pressure goes through that leg and how do you kind of realign things so you have better press, pressure distribution. And that's what I like about an orthotic is we can make immediate changes and people can feel better right away. Now, it's not the case with everybody, but for the most part, that's how it works. Um, so let's talk about some of the diagnoses you can treat with um, uh, an orthotic. There's plantar fasciitis, okay? So supporting the arch and preventing the heel from going into calcaneal eversion can help decrease the stress on the plantar fascia. 
One of the diagnoses I really love to treat with an orthotic is posterior tibial tendonitis. Because if you think about it, that posterior tib tendon acts like a cable and it suspends the medial side of the foot and it helps to plantar flex the foot. But you put an orthotic in, you so in and you support the medial side of the foot, it gives some rest to that posterior tib tendon and generally people will feel better a lot faster. And what else do we do? We do metatarsalgia, my number one favorite diagnosis to put um, into an orthotic because you can offload the metatarsals, reestablish the metatarsal arch, and you can make a little cliff there so that the metatarsal doesn't strike the floor so hard. So most of these, like 95% of the people who come in for custom orthotics for metatarsalgia see immediate relief as soon as they put the orthotic on. I do the same type of orthotic for Morton's neuroma. We try to unload and stop the excessive splaying uh, of the foot. And um, we try to take some of that pressure off of that second, third, and fourth metatarsal distally because that's really not made to bear a lot of weight. So we can reestablish uh, where the weight is and redistribute the weight. Uh, Achilles tendonitis, I'm a huge believer in using an orthotic to help uh, decrease Achilles tendonitis or Achilles tendinopathy. The... In the past, when I was a young therapist, we always thought, well, the Achilles pulls in a linear direction up and down. And if we put a heel lift in there, the patient's Achilles will not take on so much pressure and it won't hurt so much, won't stress the uh, calf as much. And um, people wear high heels and they feel better all of a sudden. Well, that, that, that's fine and dandy to take out the immediate acute inflammatory process to help settle it down some. But where the problem comes in there is that the Achilles is bowing side to side and it does not like to do that. So what we do is we put an orthotic in there, we cup the heel, support the arch, and the calcaneus does not go into so much eversion. So therefore, you don't have so much bowing to the Achilles. And we found significantly better results using an orthotic than using a heel lift for Achilles tendonitis or tendinopathy. So that's, uh, that's something that uh, we do uh, a lot here. I really very, very seldomly ever use a heel lift. Um, we're also using orthotics for people with patellofemoral dysfunction. You know, people with a high Q angle and the uh, arch is collapsing. Maybe the hip abductors are weak and the patient has a lot of valgus, genuvalgus in the knees. We support the uh, arch a little bit to help with uh, decreasing the uh, Q angle. And then I also like to use a custom orthotic for people who have lateral hip dysfunction greater trochanteric bursitis, or uh, glute medius, um, you know, tendonitis, tendinopathy, or tears. Uh, it seems like people who have these problems have a pes planus type foot. The knee collapses in a little bit. It overstresses the lateral, lateral side of the hip. So I like to put orthotics on those folks, and they seem to do really well with that. What types of orthotics are, are there out there? There are so many. It's crazy to try to even think about suggesting one over another. Um, I build a semi-rigid orthotic uh, and I take an impression, find subtalar neutral, and then I, I build the orthotic around the patient's problem. So biomechanically, I evaluate the patient and then I modify the orthotic to that person. So I don't ever put just a standard orthotic on a patient. Now, there are accommodative orthotics. So some people just have very, very tender feet. They need something that is going to cushion them a little bit more. They might have a plantar fibromatosis or something like that, or a fibroma that is very painful. So you want to kind of cushion that. So that is called an accommodative orthotic. Then when we get into something called a corrective orthotic, where we want to try to stabilize the heel, maybe change the forefoot pressure, support the arch, we are starting to um, change the structure of the foot, how it strikes the floor and how it reacts when you put weight on it. So that's where I start to work with semi-rigid and rigid orthotics. Um, a rigid orthotic is difficult to adjust, usually a very hard um, material like a high density plastic. Um, and sometimes they're even made out of metal. Uh, I like to use a semi-rigid orthotic, which is made out of neoprene and several layers of material that we order and request. Nice thing about a semi-rigid orthotic is it kind of seems to flow with the foot um, when they walk, but it has to support when they're in mid stance. And so they can be very, very supportive also. And I like the semi-rigid because I can adjust it. I can make a lot of changes to the orthotic because you really should never make an orthotic for somebody or order an orthotic for somebody and think that they're just going to get it and they're going to be fine with it. And so most of my patients are like that. I'd probably say 80 to 90% of my orthotics patients don't need to come back for any adjustments. But sometimes people will be a little bit sore in a certain spot and then you can adjust it. And that's very, very important. So the follow-up 
after getting your orthotic is super important. If you're not capable of doing that, you probably shouldn't be making orthotics on patients. Um, there are certain people out there where it doesn't matter what you put on their feet, they're not going to be comfortable. I've had patients come in here with 30 pairs of shoes, boots, sandals, the whole nine yards and a bag and just dump that out and say, all right, I've tried everything here. Or they've spent a thousand dollars on shoes and they're just not any better. Usually if you make some sort of a change, something will be better. So if somebody comes in, they have, you know, 20 pair of shoes and they've tried everything out there, you need to be wondering if they'll even have improvement with an orthotic. We call that the princess and the pea syndrome. And so um, be cautious to put orthotics on those folks, but you can also tell them that there's no guarantee that they will be 100% better once they start using that. So um, again, when you order up or you want an orthotic for somebody, uh, you, you, I typically don't just put an orthotic on someone, okay? I usually use that kind of a little bit later on down the road. You look at the structural issues. Gastrocnemius tightness is, you know, one of the largest causes of why people will develop foot and ankle problems, and that will probably be my next podcast. We're going to talk about Aquinas-related foot and ankle dysfunction. So I typically will start people on good stretching exercises, maybe some management, talk about their shoes a little bit, getting out of, you know, the, uh, the flat flip-flop or a real hard bottom shoe and uh, talk about proper shoe wear and um, then if we've done that and or they've gone through a little conservative treatment and they're still not better then we would consider doing an orthotic because these are usually something that costs quite a bit um, but we want to make sure that the patient is happy and that we've tried everything else if you put an orthotic on a patient with a plantar fasciitis and you haven't improved their gastroc soleus mobility I can almost guarantee you that arch is going to kill them when they first start wearing it um, and uh, when they wear the orthotic. So that's important that you uh, address all those other biomechanical issues and then uh, you'll be in pretty good shape. So when it comes to orthotics, make sure you put them on the right person. Make sure you put the right type on there. Um, always treat the other biomechanical issues that are involved and always make sure that an orthotic can be adjusted, okay? And that will improve the compliance of your patient and can make them very, very happy. We have a, an extremely high success rate treating patients with custom orthotics here. Um, and we use a whole variety of temporary orthotics and less rigid, less expensive orthotics. And sometimes that works for the right person. Um, but you need to look at the foot structure and make sure that it is appropriate for them. Um, consult with an orthotist or or a uh, podorthist or a physical therapist who does impressions and uh, does orthotics and uh, find out if that patient is going to be a, an appropriate candidate for an orthotic. So if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, get in touch with me on uh, orthoevalpal.com. Go to our um, get in touch page and I will leave some information in our show notes today, some links for you, like uh, the link to our uh, Easy Slant website in order to, uh, you know, purchase or uh, take a look at why we use uh, slant boards, how we use them and uh, what the best ones are out there. And uh, for any other questions or any other topic you'd like to discuss uh, or any frustrations you may have, uh, you may have a, a certain diagnosis that you really, really have a hard time with or you, you see it on your schedule book and you're like, oh my gosh, these are the most difficult diagnoses to treat uh, and, you, and you get frustrated before the patient comes in. Those are the ones that I want to teach you about and I want to help you with. So I don't want to do the, the real simple and easy diagnosis. I want to talk about something that may be a little challenging to you and uh, hopefully give you a few pearls on uh, making life a little bit better because as a healthcare provider, you want to be comfortable treating your orthopedic uh, patients, making sure that you can uh, give them the right treatment for the right problem and uh, the patient will be happy. You'll be happy at the end of the day and um, the uh, healthcare system will be a lot happier for you for being uh, efficient and effective as a healthcare provider. So again, thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. My name is Paul Marquis from Ortho Valpal, and we'll see you at episode 33. Take care.